Welcome to the second lecture in light microscopy. Today I will talk about polarization and differential interference contrast techniques. And uh, for polarization, it's, uh, it's, I think it's best just to demonstrate how it works because you can show quite cool features with this. Here I take my computer, this is my laptop computer, and uh, what, you, what I have here is, uh, in this case, a light source with polarized light. So this screen emits uh, white polarized light. And if I take a polarized filter, uh, a polarized uh, polarization filter will only emit light uh, with a different polarization and angle. And this plastic sheet uh, is one of those. So if, if the, this polarization filter doesn't have the same uh, alignment angle as uh, the polarized light of the screen, it will cancel out that light. So if I rotate this, you will see that effect. You see? And in, in uh, polarization microscopy, the, the fundamental thing is that you start with a uh, console out light source like this. Usually in, in polarization microscopy, the light source is not polarized light, but you put a polarization filter on top of it first to make polarized light. But in my case, I already have a polarized source here, so it, I don't need that, so I only use one filter here. But in microscopy of polarized light, do you, in polarization microscopy, you use this kind of setup. You view through a polarization filter and you view polarized light. And the thing here is that if you have something that uh, is uh, anisotropic and, and it will affect the polarized light by changing its polarization angle. And here, for example, I have this uh, cover of this, uh, this plastic wrap of this uh, CD case. And... Uh, we open this and I can take this uh, CD and everything out like this. So this is the uh, plastic and this is molded plastic. And uh, one thing with molded plastic is that it, uh, it contains uh, stress and strains in inside the plastic due to this fabrication process. And the stresses in plastic will uh, have effect on polarized light. So you, you can see, see the stresses in this plastic with this technique. So I will demonstrate that. So here I cancel out the light, like so. And then I put in uh, this little piece. Now you see all the colors of, of this uh, CD case. And uh, the bending curves of the colors, you see is some kind of shapes, especially towards the edges of it. That is an indication of stresses in, in, in the plastic. You can also do this on, on glass, for example. It will not have color then, but you will see some uh, bright, uh, bright rings where you have stresses in the glass. I think I will put my polarization filter on top of the camera there, so then everything in the room will be polarized for you. I think that will be easier for me also. No! You view him through polarized light. So everything I put here in front of the screen, you will actually see at the effect though, but, but not me. <laughs> but I have more hands to, to, to spare. You can also view this thin plastic. And uh, uh, when I view this here, you will see the fade of that. And... Uh, I guess this will show you a different a specific color and if I fold it like this it will create a, a, even another effect. Now I folded it once I can try to fold it uh, again like so. You see the, the general idea with this plastic is uh, with this you can create what's called a lambda plate. And the lambda plate uh, will transform these changes in the polarization light uh, when you look at anisotropic materials into colors. And uh, that makes it more easy for you to recognize what the changes actually is. 
So uh, this is the general idea with po polarized uh, mi mi microscopy. And so if the sample is uh, uh, have structural features in it, uh, usually uh, uh, yeah, these plastic things. Uh, if you have a tape, for example, that's stretched in one direction, even the polarizing plastic f sheet I use now on the camera has these uh, li linear molecules aligned in the sheet. And all these structural things in, in the sample will have an effect on, on polarized light. So th th then it's called anisotropic also because it has this effect. Uh, so then you can use this technique to analyze and study especially these kind of features. And uh, in the demonstration move I showed you uh, uh, a sample of this Lille of the Valleys when we looked about uh, looked on this uh, starch molecule in the in the root, which is a, a crystal looking uh, crystal shaped structure that had this anisotropic effect. So this is the basic thing with polarized light. Uh, this polarized light will we come back to now when we, I will start talk about differential interference contrast. But uh, there is one key element that's still missing in difference or interference contrast because b before we can fully understand that technique. And uh, that's this uh, bifringent uh, uh, crystals that I will show you now. So I will remove the polarizing film on top of the camera now. All right. Here I have a, a double refracting crystal or a bifringent crystal. This is uh, calcide and uh, uh, this is the final key piece in order to make differential interference contrast. With these crystals you can make what's called this Wollaston prism. But uh, we start by analyzing what this actually is, this kind of crystal. It has a special property. Uh, I say it is a uh, double refracting and uh, the, that means that, that the refractive index of this crystal is depending on the polarization angle of the light. So if you have a polarized light that you lit up on the, t through this crystal and then you change the angle of that polarization, the refractive index will change and the light will come out in a different direction. The easiest way to demonstrate this is you just put it on top of your book like this. And what you can see then is that the, the, the text uh, you, you, it becomes double. You see two, two, uh, two lines of row with the same text inside the crystal when you look through it. And that's because that the light in this room is not polarized. It has all the polarization angles. So, and then light will go through this the crystal and uh, light in one polarization angle will take a different pathway compared to another. And then that will create in, in the final stage two images that you see when you look through it. And this calcite crystal is unique because it has an extremely high effect on this. So it is visible by just looking through the crystal. So how do you transform this crystal into a usable differential interference contrast microscope? Well, first you need to split this crystal into wedge-shaped forms. Then you combine those two, two of these wedges into what's called a Wollaston prism. And uh, the Wollaston prism looks like this sort of. And uh, when you have made a Wollaston prism, you actually create two of them. And one of them you place above the light source beneath the condenser. And the, one, uh, the other one is on top of the objective. The idea here is that the polarized light that you send in from the light source goes through this crystal and will be split up into two different pathways. So then you will have two separated light waves that goes out from this crystal. And then these two polarized wavelengths can go through the sample. And if one of the wavelengths is interacting with the sample and the other one isn't, then, when you combine this uh, uh, wavelength again at the top Wollaston prism of the microscope, then you will have an interference of those two beam pathways, and that will create this contrast effect. If both light rays go through the sample or passes outside the sample, then uh, you will have no effect at all, and that will be cancelled out. So basically, differential interference contrast 
It's sort of like the, the derivative of a face contrast image. That's how it looks like. And if you look at the images, uh, it, it, the, these uh, Dix images uh, t tends to have something that looks uh, three-dimensional. It, it, it isn't three-dimensional, but the appearance will be a three-dimensional. So that is the typical thing that you see. And uh, uh, differential interference contrast is also called the Nemersk method. And uh, it is a different construction of the microscope, but it's, it's the same technique. So either you say Nemersk or you say differential interference contrast. All right, I think uh, that is enough of this lecture. Uh, this is the final lecture of the light microscopy chapter. But um, what I want to do now is it's a complex problem. And here I give you two to choose between. One is that you make a description of the technique that's called confocal laser microscopy. That you can see in, 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 in the book here, it's described in the course book. But the, what I want you to do is to compare this technique to what's called, uh, to what we will see later in the scanning electron microscope. These two are both scanning techniques, so it's sort of similar, and I think it uh, makes a good understanding if you make this comparison between them. And uh, to, do, to do some feedback on that, I want you to find uh, some college that has uh, made the scanning electron microscopy chapter to give you feedback on this. So then you can uh, have a more detailed, in-depth discussion with that colleague around this. And you post this in the procedure as I given below. The, the other the complex problem that you instead can choose to do is to create this uh, lambda plate of the microscope. Uh, in order to, to do that, you need to have some kind of polarizing sheet, a uh, uh, polarizing light source, as, uh, for example, the laptop computer, all these uh, uh, flat screen displays usually is polarized light. And uh, you would need to have one of those. And, uh, and the polarizing sheet, if you don't have that, you perhaps have these sunglasses with polarized light. You can use one of those as well. It works exactly the same. And then you use this uh, uh, plastic wrapper that I showed you around the CD case. And if you fold that in a specific uh, direction, then you can create uh, your own lambda plate. And, uh, I want you to do that uh, and uh, describe uh, either with uh, your own movie, with the uh, picture or what, whatever uh, um, media you choose. So you, you show this, how you do this and, and post it as I, uh, it's written below. So you have two, two complex problems to choose between here. Good luck and see you on the next chapter.